Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about players to watch for St Kilda in 2023. Not necessarily the up and comers, not just focusing on some of the youngsters that obviously I'll talk about, but just players that I think will hopefully improve next year, hopefully be a big factor um, as to, to us, you know, improving um, as a club overall and climbing up the ladder. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna get stuck into Rowan Marshall. Now, some people might be surprised that I'm mentioning Rowe because he's kind of established himself, but I think that he's a player to watch this year in particular because it's really the first year where he's, you know, he's a known ruckman. He's going to be the number one ruck for us, obviously, and he's not going to have Paddy Ryder, who retired at the end of the season. So for me, I think he's worth mentioning in this video because when you think about our rucks and, um, you know, kind of playing St Kilda over the last couple of years, particularly under Brett Ratton since 2020, the focus has been how do, how do other clubs stop that dual ruck? You know, how do they combat Rowan Marshall going forward and Paddy Ryder going in the ruck and then Rowe going into the ruck and then Paddy Ryder going forward? How can teams negate that? Now, that's not so much a problem because Paddy Ryder is no longer an AFL player. But where this kind of makes it interesting for me is that, I've always been of the belief that Rowe's best football, for the majority of the time, has been pretty good on his own. You know, when he hasn't had Paddy there, he's had his career-high numbers. Stats show it. A couple of examples here. So from round 18 onwards this year, Paddy Ryder didn't play. And Rowan Marshall played every game in that period on his own, without a Ruckman. Tom Campbell, I think, maybe played a game, but or, or maybe he didn't. But, you, you know, he's playing majority of the time Ruck on his own. Round 19, the first game without Paddy Ryder, Rowe had 15 disposals and 49 hitouts against West Coast. He backed that up the week after with 30 disposals, career high, I believe, and 35 hitouts. I think he won the medal, best on ground medal, against Hawthorne in the Blue Ribbon Cup game. I think that was that game. Then you've got, he played Geelong, 21 disposals, 37 hitouts. Very good again. Then he played Brisbane, 20 disposals, 42 hitouts. He's he's getting a lot of touches. He's getting a lot of hitouts. Round 23, not so much. We lost to Sydney um, pretty comfortably. He only had the eight, but he had 21 hitouts. So you can see in that four-week spell, uh, minus the last game in round 23, Rowan Marshall's best form was on his own. I'm looking at the disposals prior to that. And obviously, obviously they were going to go high because he's playing more time. So he's not rotating with... Um, Paddy Ryder as much, but he was very valuable. He was close to our best player for that month. That's how good he was, and that was on his own. So for me, he's a player to watch next year because although we've got Tom Campbell, although we've got Max Heath, although we might draft someone, who knows, although we've got Jack Hayes coming back um, from ACL injury, and he's obviously going to be a big factor for me too, Rowan Marshall will be the main man for the majority of 2023. So for me, that is a key reason as to why he's in this video. I'm very interested to see how he goes in the early stages of 2023, especially because I think Jack Hayes will return in February from his injury. Not sure if he'll be ready for round one, but if he is, that's great. If he's not, Rowan Marshall and maybe Tom Campbell or just Rowe on his own will uh, will take the ruck spot and uh, be the main man. So Big year ahead for Rowe without Paddy. It's his first one in a while, um, but I think he's going he's gonna to grow from it. So I'm really excited to see how he goes. The next player, and this is more out of intrigue, based on the offseason, based on what could have happened, what was planned to happen, and that's Hunter Clark. Now, Hunter Clark has been, I would say, an enigma over the last couple of years. He's had his injuries. He's shown glimpses. He's also had poor games. He's had outstanding games. 2020 in that final series, that back end, back end of 2020, he was great. You know, that was the Hunter Clark that I really thought we would get from that point on. He was silky. He was dodging blokes. He was making people look silly with, you know, some of the things that he was doing. That game against Hawthorne where he dodged the, the player and kicked the goal. You know, he was selling candy like it was nothing. Um, I think it's going to be very, very exciting to see his evolution under Lenny Hayes' tutelage as the midfield coach. And then you've obviously got Brendan Goddard and Robert Harvey, three players that know what it takes to be very, very good midfielders, um, have done it in different ways. Robert Harvey, very, very hardworking. Brendan Goddard, high draft pick, number one draft pick. Lenny Hayes, again, hardworking, had to grind it, had to develop his leadership over time. 
So I think they've all got different traits that they can really help with Hunter. I think that his big thing is his fitness. I think that's always been a slight on him is that he's got the skills we know he does, but we need we need to see him a bit more in the gym. Put on a bit of size, get that tank going because until he has that tank, he can't be a full-time mid, which is where we all see him or at least where I see him. I don't see him at half back for life. I don't see him on the wing. I don't see him at half forward. I think he can be that Nicky Dell type player that we need. So for me, he's a player to watch because he was nearly traded because North were on the verge of nearly getting him. You know, there was so much news, so many rumors circulating around Hunter Clark and whether we were going to keep him or move him on. He's now a saint. Lenny Hayes has come out and said that he's very, very excited to see what he can do with Hunter Clark. So I think we're all very, very excited to have Lenny on board and see his excitement to, to coach Hunter Clark. But also off the back of that, we should all be very, very excited to see what they can do with Hunter Clark and how he can evolve in this offseason so that when it comes to round one next year, he's not that he could be a good player. We want to see that he is ready. You know, it's his time now. His first game was 2018, I think, in round one. It's four years ago, nearly five years ago. He's had enough time. I understand he's had his injuries in the last couple of years, and that's set him, that sets anyone back with some of the injuries that he's had, and that's been strictly bad luck. Fresh off season, we want to see him in the gym. We want to see him running. We want to see the best Hunter Clark he can be next season. So that is why he's in this video as a player to watch in 2023. Another one for me, and I think this guy, he's... He's, uh, he's been talked up. He's been talked up already. It's literally one week into preseason, and he's already had multiple articles about him, posts, everything. Everyone loves him. Future Brownlow medalist. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but Marcus Winhager is going to be very exciting to watch in 2023. This guy is a training freak. He doesn't stop. From all reports, he just trains longer than everyone else. He trains more than everyone else. He trains harder than everyone else. And the fact that Lenny Hayes and Robert Harvey, and I mention it many, many times, but it's I've got to stress it, it's very important that players like Hunter Clark, players like Marcus Winhager, have these sort of leaders to, to look to. And they're going to push him more. And the fact that you know he's already come out on radio last week and said that he's super excited to be you know, under under the reins of Ross Lyon, I think that's going to drive him even more. And I was chatting to some of the guys earlier today at RECA, and I was saying, Marcus Winhager should be looking at our midfield and going, I can be a top three, top four midfielder for St. Kilda next season. Obviously, we've got Grash, we've got um, Jack Steele, Brad Crouch, we've got these guys in the guts, but there is no reason at all why after a big, big preseason, which I'm, I'm certain that he's going to have, he, there's no reason why he cannot be knocking down on the door to be starting in the guts every week for St. Kilda next year. He's got all the assets to be a very, very, very good midfielder for St. Kilda and in the AFL. Obviously, I don't want to be putting too much pressure on the kid because he's only 18 or 19, but he showed plenty last season. His tagging ability is exceptional already for such a youngster, to be able to go to players like Tim Kelly and players like Lockie Neal and shut them down and get the ball themselves. You know, against Brisbane, he had 21. He kept Lockie Neal to, I think, 16 or something. His lowest count in about five years for, for under Brisbane. Um, so that's exceptional. I think that the next step for him is obviously to be consistent because even just looking at these stats, you can see he's had big games. He's had, you know, 15 disposal games, a lot of tackles, and then the next week he'll have six. But there were some games where he played as the sub. Next year, he's not going to be anything like that. I think he's going to be one of Ross's favorites. And it's not because of any reason other than Ross is going to see that this guy's a very, very hard worker. And he's going to set the tone for a lot of players um, for the offseason. You know, he's already won the time trial, the 3K time trial. He's won that. His endurance is elite. He's got good skills. He's got good size. He's only going to get bigger and taller. Um, and he's got enough pace that you know he's not sluggish on the on on the deck when he gets gets the ball he doesn't get caught very often and when he does his hands are very very quick and even marshy was saying earlier today that after you know marshy would be helping out with the aflw training and doing the banner and all that sort of stuff for the girls and he would look into the gym and he would see marcus winhager doing the handballs on the trampoline, back and forth, back and forth, really quick, and then turn and nail the ball into the bin down the other end of the gym. And he would do that, you know, most nights. So the fact that 
He's already, you know, we know he's got the talent, but he's got the attitude. And that's something that Ross Lyon is going to absolutely feast on and love. So Marcus Wienhager, a player to watch in 2023. Now, this player might be a bit of a surprise for you, um, but he had, a, he had a great season in 2022, apart from, you know, an injury setback. But based on the game style that I think Ross Lyon is going to implement, which is he said that we can run, but that doesn't mean we're fast. It means we can run a lot, that we've got good endurance players. That already, to me, says that DMAC is going to be a player to watch for St. Kilda in 2023. DMAC had an outstanding season. It would have been even better if he didn't get injured after the bye against Brisbane. But he's got all the skills now. He's got the endurance. His foot skills are great. His marking skills are great. He can hit the scoreboard. And he's got the wing position locked down. I can see it already in round one, 2023. This is a sort of guy like Wendy that is hardworking, that is going to honor anything the coach wants him to do, whether it's tag, go forward, go half back, whatever you want. He's going to be a coach's pet because he's going to do what's needed for the team. He's, he's the ultimate team player. And I think that we're still yet to see his absolute best. I think that he can get better. I'm not sure how old... Mackenzie is, he's, uh, he's 26 years old, so he's at that prime age, which is great, like a lot of our players. Uh, I can see him being a very, very important player to our lineup next year. If we're going to make finals, Dan McKenzie's going to be five, top six most important player in our team. I can see it now. He was probably close to our most important up until the bye with the outlet, the running, just the connection that he creates. And I think if Ross is going to play that sort of game where it's an open running game, then Dan McKenzie's going to be that. He's going to unlock a lot of opportunities for us against opposition teams next season. So Dan McKenzie, for me, is a 2023 player to watch. Now that's it, Sainers. That's the video. Obviously, I could talk about a lot of other players. Max King's obviously one that I wanted to mention, but I've mentioned him before, and I think he's just an ongoing player to watch because he's Max King. But I wanted to focus on a few lesser likes that um, that I think could be really, really important players for St. Kilda, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be superstars next season. I just think, based on where they're at, they're going to be very interesting to watch to see how they evolve in 2023 for the club. So if there are any other players that you think are going to be players to watch in 2023, please comment below and let me know. And most importantly, please like the video and subscribe. Now, if you haven't heard, I'm willing to give away a free St. Kilda membership if we hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this season. Before 2023, 5,000 subs, and I may give you a free St. Kilda membership for next season. So there's some incentive for you. I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, go you mighty Saners. See you guys.